Ever heard of the phrase, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours? In the animal kingdom, this isn't just a saying, it's a way of life. But what if the one doing the scratching was secretly plotting your demise? Or perhaps while you're getting your back scratched, your partner is plotting a clever escape, leaving you with nothing but an empty nest. Welcome to the wild world of symbiosis, where partnerships can be built on trust or deception. Symbiosis, a fancy word that simply means living together. It's how certain animals rely on others for survival. These relationships often come in three types, mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. In mutualism, both parties benefit. Commensalism, one benefits while the other doesn't seem to care. And parasitism, well, that's when one's definitely winning. And the other is, how should I say it? Not so lucky. In the wild, symbiosis is more common than we think. Some creatures have formed partnerships so strange that you might wonder if they drew their teammates' names out of a hat. Let's explore a few of these odd couples and see who's really benefiting. Sharks might seem like the playground bullies of the ocean, but there's one little creature they'll never mess with. The cleaner fish. These tiny fish boldly swim right into the shark's mouth. Yes, you heard that right. They swim into the shark's mouth to pick off bits of food and parasites stuck between the shark's teeth. In return for this dental service, the sharks provide a free, albeit risky, meal. It's a classic case of mutualism. The cleaner fish get a buffet, and the sharks get a fresh smile. But if you ask me, the cleaner fish might just have the sweeter end of the bargain. I mean, in the ocean, who wouldn't love free meals without the constant fear of becoming someone else's dinner? Imagine going through your day with a personal assistant who follows you around cleaning up your mess and keeping the bugs off your back. For cows, that assistant is the cattle egret. Some people just call them cowbirds for short. As cows graze, they disturb insects in the grass and the egrets happily swoop in to snatch them up. The cow doesn't really gain anything from this, except for maybe a little less bug biting. So this one falls under commensalism. Egrets are the clear winners here benefiting from the cows grazing without giving much in return. Not all partnerships are friendly, but in fact, some are downright sinister. Welcome to the world of parasitism, where one animal thrives at the expense of another. Cuckoos are the ultimate freeloaders of the bird world. Instead of building their own nests, they sneak their eggs into the nests of other bird species. The unsuspecting foster parents end up raising the cuckoo chick as their own, often at the expense of their actual offspring. This is parasitism at its finest. The cuckoos benefit while the host birds get nothing but heartbreak. The real question is, how do cuckoos get away with it? They've mastered the art of disguise and deception, ensuring their survival while their hosts remain none the wiser. Here's how they've mastered this art of disguise. The cuckoo has the ability to mimic the eggs of its host species. Different cuckoo species lay eggs that closely resemble the color, size, arm, and pattern of the host bird's eggs, making it hard for the unsuspecting parent to notice the imposter. This camouflage allows the cuckoo egg to blend in seamlessly with the host's clutch, thereby reducing the chances of it being detected and rejected. Cuckoos are also highly strategic about when they lay their eggs. They watch their chosen host carefully and wait for the perfect moment, usually when the host is away from the nest. They sneak in and deposit their egg. This timing ensures that the host bird doesn't witness the cuckoo's presence and won't get suspicious. The cuckoo chick typically hatches earlier than the host's own eggs. This is no coincidence. Cuckoo chicks grow faster in the egg and emerge ready to take over the nest. Once hatched, the cuckoo chick pushes the host's eggs or chicks out of the nest, ensuring that it gets all the attention and food from its foster parents. Even after hatching, cuckoo chicks continue the act of deception. They produce sounds that mimic a whole brood of the host species chicks. This tricks the foster parents into thinking they have more mouths to feed than they actually do. This causes the foster parents to work even harder, 
bringing more food to satisfy what they believe is a large, hungry family, when in reality it's just one greedy cuckoo chick. This has got to be one of the most bizarre and horrifying examples of parasitic symbiosis, the tongue-eating louse, a small crustacean that lives in the mouths of fish. Here's how this creepy parasite operates. The tongue-eating louse enters a fish's mouth through the gills and attaches itself to the base of the fish's tongue. There, inside the mouth, it feeds on the blood supply gradually causing the fish's tongue to atrophy and eventually fall off. As the fish's tongue deteriorates, the louse takes its place and effectively becomes the fish's new tongue. It doesn't kill the host, but the louse benefits from feeding on the fish's blood and mucus while still allowing the fish to eat and survive. But the louse doesn't just hang around. It literally functions as though it were the fish's actual real tongue, moving with the fish and helping it eat all while stealing nutrients for itself. This parasitic relationship doesn't directly kill the fish, but it certainly doesn't help it thrive. How creepy is that? Both the cuckoo bird and the tongue-eating louse show us just how far some species will go to ensure their survival, even often at the expense of their hosts. Symbiosis isn't always a friendly partnership. Sometimes it's all about who can deceive and exploit the best. It's not all trickery in nature, though. Some relationships are built on trust and protection. Take the partnership between ants and the acacia tree. The tree offers the ants food and shelter, providing them with sweet nectar and hollow thorns to live in. In return, the ants act as bodyguards, attacking any animal that dares to munch on the tree's leaves. This mutualistic relationship benefits both parties equally. The ants get a safe home with an endless supply of food while the tree stays safe from herbivores. A true win-win situation. Symbiotic relationships reveal the delicate balance of nature and show us that survival often depends on cooperation, even when it seems unlikely. From the tiniest cleaner fish to the most cunning cuckoo, animals have found ways to benefit from one another, whether it's through teamwork, indifference, or outright exploitation. So the next time you see a bird sitting on a cow or a tiny fish cleaning a shark, remember that in nature it's all about the benefits. Who knows? Maybe there's a lesson in there for us too, in that sometimes helping others can be just as rewarding as helping ourselves.